the secret that generally there are two types of the facilities, uh, nuclear facilities. The facilities that we use to produce energy, it is NPPs, nuclear power plants, and nuclear research facilities. And there is a stereotype uh, in many countries that are the necessity of nuclear research facilities is much less in comparison with traditional NPPs because uh, they do not, I mean, nuclear research facilities, they do not give us an energy. Today, I would like to show in my presentation that very often the necessity of nuclear research facilities is, is very higher in comparison with NPPs because, yes, they do not give us energy, but they give us health. They give us technological development. They give us food. Etc. So, but first of all, let's look at the definition, very short definition, what nuclear research facility is. So, as you see, nuclear research facility is any facility that we use to get and use of neutrons and ionizing radiation for research and other purposes. Then, on this map, you can see the brief history of the development of nuclear research facilities. And are, if you see at the first, period, the, the period of the appearance, first generation of nuclear research facilities. So the use of these facilities was mainly aimed at military purposes. But from the second generation till now, the peaceful use of these facilities has become more and more popular. Uh, at the third stage of their development, the understanding has come to the mind that we can use these facilities to get profit because we can produce medical isotopes, we can produce uh, silicon doping materials, etc. And now we are at the fourth stage or, and fourth generation of nuclear research facilities. And the focus of these facilities is completely ecological and environmental safety. Our, the facilities that I would like to tell you about, there are three facilities from the biggest one till the smallest one. And here I would like to say that uh, in our university, in Tomsk Polytechnic University, we have all of these facilities. That is why today I will not uh, tell you about the use of these facilities theoretically. I will tell you about real practical application of these facilities. And let's start with the biggest one, nuclear research reactor. Well, you know, uh, now our university is the only and the one university in Russia that has operating nuclear research facility. So we have operating nuclear research reactor with the opportunity for international students, and we have Indian students among our students to be trained at this facility. And let's look at application fields of this facility. As I've already said, it is production of medical isotopes, uh, radioisotopes. But it is also technologies of neutron activation analysis. These technologies are very important for radioecological activities. Development of neutron caption therapy to fight with cancer, especially in operable brain cancer. Next activity is very important, nuclear transmutation doping of silicon. Without doped silicon, higher current semiconductor industry nowadays is not possible to be developed. Or if your country wants to develop solar energy facilities, wind energy facilities, electrical cars, etc., So you can't deal with it without doped silicon. But to get doped silicon, you need nuclear research facility. So um, then we can use this facility, I mean, nuclear research reactor for different uh, research um, and education are just some words about these activities in detail, silicon doping technology. This is, that, this is rather interesting fact that are in the laboratory of silicon doping, which is located at our nuclear research reactor, just small laboratory of university reactor, we produce 5% of the annual world volume of doped silicon which is quite profitable activity. And as I have already said, uh, without this activity, your country can't develop solar, wind, and other technologies currently, unfortunately. So, and the students who are interested in this facility, they are welcome to deal with it at our nuclear research reactor. And without nuclear research reactor, you can't develop this facility, this, this technology, sorry. 
then our production of medical isotopes. A little bit later, we will focus on it more. But here on the photo, you can see the example of real medical isotopes and radiopharmaceuticals that are produced at nuclear research facility in our, at our facility in particular, but you can use any nuclear research facility to produce it. And then these radiopharmaceuticals are, are supplied to medical hospitals, oncological hospitals for diagnostic of cancer patients or treatment of cancer patients. That is why, as I've already said, sometimes the importance of nuclear research facilities is at the same level or even higher in comparison with NPPs because it is doped silicon and higher semiconductor industry. It is health and fighting with cancer. Uh, it is environment because with the use of neutron activation analysis, and you can do it only at nuclear research facility, or uh, you can do the measuring of uh, the radionuclide composition of environmental objects. So you can test so-called radiation safety of soils, surface, groundwater, veget vegetables, food, etc. So this is a very nice instrument uh, to measure the safety of the environment which is around us. Our in the continuation of the previous activity, radiation and environmental monitoring. So to do it, you need nuclear research facility, but with the use of nuclear research facility, you can do radiation control for your oil and gas industry, or you can do radiation control of industrial waste, not only radioactive waste. You can do radiation dosimetry control in X-ray diagnostic, and you know that currently there is no any hospital, medical hospital without X-ray facilities, and radiation dosimetry control is very important for such institutions. So all other activities you can see at this slide, even monitoring of pollution of natural environment. Modification of materials properties, which, which is also a very interesting activity. For example, our topazes, you know that precious stones and semi-precious stones very often, they have so nice and bright colors thanks to the natural radiation. But currently, uh, more and more often, we meet uh, the natural pressure and semi-pressure stones without this nice color. And we can help nature and we can help the stones to get this color because we can uh, use the radiation of nuclear research facility to give this bright color to the stones and then to sell the stones to the jewelry industry. So if you visit any jewelry shop, and you see very nice and bright colored stones, there is a higher probability that this nice color was given to the stones with the use of nuclear research facility. Then or here you can see the real examples of the projects that are developed are at our nuclear research facility. And with the use of any research nuclear research facility, you can develop the same or similar projects from cryogenic material science till positron annihilation spectroscopy. Our new complexes with the use of nuclear research facility, you can produce new complexes and we have done this. So in here you can see the examples of the complexes, automatic complexes, mobile complexes that are produced at our our research reactor. Practical training is also very important. So our nuclear power engineers that are trained at our nuclear research facility, they are involved in the practical our activity and the examples of the projects and case studies at our nuclear research reactor, you can see here on the slide, from measurings of flux spectra, et cetera, till power decay, delayed neutron group measurements, any. Okay, let's go to the second facility. So in comparison with the first one, the second facility, research cyclotron, is much smaller. It does not need such our security and safety level as the reactor demands. So the cyclotron is located and can be located in any university building. But the application is also rather wide for cyclotron. Uh, in comparison with nuclear research reactor, it is not nuclear facility, but it is accelerating facility. Uh, the usage of this facility also production 
are development and production of medical radio pharmaceuticals. The isotopes are different, but the activity is the same. Uh, neutron therapy for oncological diseases. Then uh, we can use accelerate this accelerated cyclotron for radiation testing of products and modification of materials, and even to produce polymer membranes for chemical industry. And the third facility that I would like to tell you about today is Betatron. So in comparison with previous two facilities, it is the smallest facility. It can be located even not in the university or any building, but in the room. Uh, Again, in comparison with previous two facilities, it is not nuclear facility, but the same as beta uh, cyclotron, it is accelerating facility. And the usage of this facility is very unique. So we can use these facilities, and I know that our university is collaborating with your country in development of beta trans technologies. So your country are buys better trons for the for your own domestic needs for road and any transport inspection for film and digital radiography of welded joints which is highly demanded but by oil and gas industry but also are if we focus on nuclear medicine technologies we can use better trons for two very important types of radiation therapy, intraoperative therapy, superficial radiation therapy. I will tell you about these types of therapy a little bit later. So three facilities, one nuclear facility, two radiation facilities. Our, here on the slide, you can see the map of the su supply and distribution of the beta trans all around the world are from United Kingdom till our, your country, till Asia and India. So the Betatrons are produced in the laboratory of Betatrons technology in our university. And moreover, the father founder of this technology is the professor, working professor of our university. And if we see at the application area, you can see on the map that the most popular are medical betatrons. That is why let's go to nuclear medicine technologies. So on this slide, you can see the very shortly, of course, the history of the development of uh, nuclear medicine technologies with the use of all these three facilities. And as you see on the slide, the first facility that we started to use for the needs of nuclear medicine more than almost 40 years ago, it was cyclotron. But very interesting fact that from that time till now, the neutron channel, which is used for the therapy of cancer patients, is still the only one at cyclotron in Russia. So, and from the beginning till now, more than 2,000 procedures have been performed with the use of this neutron ch channel at our cyclotron. Then in 90s, we started to use betatrons for the treatment of malignant neoplasms. And our, on the eve of zeros, the, the technology, waste-free technology of uh, production of technetium 99 generator was developed by one of the professors of our university. Here, the fact is very interesting because are now there are just two technologies in the world, just two technologies to produce molybdenum-99 generator isotope. You know that uh, technetium-99 is the most widely used in oncological hospitals are diagnostic isotope because it is cheap, it is very popular, but to produce technetium-99 generator, we need to get molybdenum-99. Again, there are just two technologies in the world. And the father founder of one of these technologies, moreover, waste-free technology, is the professor of our university. He is the head of the laboratory of radio pharmaceuticals pr production. He is still working and dealing with the students and uh, supervising the students with their research. And from 2003, we started to our supply compact and remotely controlled technetium 99 generators to oncological hospitals. Our, so these generators were also designed and are developed by this professor. Well, our, 
Let's think about radio pharmaceuticals. Why today I am telling about them so much? There is a stereotype again that uh, medical isotopes and radio pharmaceuticals are needed only to deal with cancer treatment or cancer diagnostic. But if you look at this slide, you can see that it's not really true because the usage of medical isotopes is much wider. So of course we use them and we, we will use them uh, to fight with cancer, but also these medical isotopes are used in heart diseases treatment and diagnostic, in kidney diseases diagnostic, in thyroid imaging activities, liver scintigraphy and lung perfusion assessment. So that is why the importance of medical isotopes is very higher, but to get them, you have to have nuclear or radiation facility. That is why today I started my presentation with the words that sometimes nuclear research facility or radiation facility is even more important than energy produced facility, because of course it does not give an energy, but it gives a health and life. So on the slide, on this slide, you can see two uh, formulas of medical uh, isotopes production. At the first part of the slide, you can see the formula of uh, waste-free technology for molybdenum-99 production, so-called uh, reactor isotope. Yeah, and the final stage is very important. There is no radiation waste at all. And in the second part of the slide, you can see the formula of so-called cyclotron radio pharmaceutical production. And as I already said, the isotopes are different, but the, uh, the purpose is the same, to fight with cancer. Well, on this slide, you can see the examples of the uh, radio pharmaceuticals that are really produced in a cooperation with medical partners at our nuclear research reactor. And of course, the leader, ultimate leader is technetium 99 generators. They are in the center of the slide. Well, our, so here there is a question, what's next? So nuclear research reactors are already existent. Cyclotrons are existent. Betatrons have already been developed. What is next in the peaceful use of nuclear radiation technologies and nuclear medicine in particular? So uh, one of the prospect uh, direction in the development of nuclear medicine technologies is seronostics. So as you see, it is a combination of two activities, therapy and diagnostic. The thing is that our we took one isotope and give it double R characteristics. So after putting into the human body, this isotope firstly works as a diagnostic uh, component or element, and then it has subsequent therapeutic effect. Why it is so important? It's not a secret that uh, when a person meets with a cancer. So the procedures, both diagnostic and therapeutic, are, are very physically hard. And you have to deal with the uh, decades of these procedures. And the purpose of nuclear medicine experts is how to ease the life of the patient at this stage, how to minimize the number of the procedures. Seronostics uh, can help us to do it. Are, on this slide, you can see the examples of the radio pharmaceuticals that uh, have already been developed uh, for seronostics activities um, by our university in the cooperation with medical institutions, of course. And also you see that we have already done several in vitro studies and even preclinical studies of several products to be used for the needs of seronostics. Then let's go back to the map about the distribution of betatrons and the popularity of betatrons, especially in the field of nuclear medicine. Are the reasons of their popularity? Look, uh, please look at the final line on the slide. Okay, a person have met with a cancer. He or she has gone through the decades of diagnostic and therapeutic procedures. Then very often there is a traditional surgery. So at that stage, or the person already has no body power at all very often, or he or she is completely exhausted, physically exhausted. But then there is a traditional five-week external radiation therapy after the surgery, five weeks. If you use Betatron, you need just one minute. Just compare these figures, one minute and five weeks. 
Uh, one more reason of the popularity of beta trons for the needs of nuclear medicine is connected to the fact, look at the second line, please, that are the danger of the cancer is that very often after all these procedures, even a surgery, after some time, the cancer comes back. Are uh, the, the, There is a uh, so-called relapse. Um, and if you use traditional methods, so usually it is 18%, which means that every fifth person meets with the coming back of cancer. When you use Betatron technologies, the percentage of these cases is just 8%, which means that less than every tenth person meets with the coming back of a cancer. Every fifth person and less than tenth person, which is also very important. Good. One more prospective direction in the field of uh, nuclear medicine is neutron capture therapy. So if you want to develop neutron capture therapy technologies, are, you need nuclear research reactor. Here, betatrons and cyclotrons can't help you. So the importance of this technology is connected to the fact that um, more and more situations happen in the world when uh, a person has a brain cancer or neck cancer, and sometimes it is not, in, it is not operable at all. Uh, why it is so? If a tumor locates very deep in the brain, you can't use traditional surgery methods because brain substance is very sensitive. And uh, while you are reaching this tumor, you have to damage healthy parts of the brain and there will be very negative result to the whole human body. For the same reason, you can't use traditional radiation therapy because while you are reaching the tumor, you will damage healthy substances of the brain. That is why maybe you have watched uh, on TV or you have heard from mass media when or uh, this or that uh, popular person meets with a brain cancer, very often there is a fatal final and quick fatal final. Neutron caption therapy helps us a lot because it allows us to deal with a tumor deep in the brain without damaging healthy substances of the tumor. At our nuclear research react in the cooperation with international partners, we are developing this technology, not only theoretically, but also practically, because uh, we have already done several procedures for real cats and dogs with uh, brain cancer, and the results are optimistic because the animals are alive or, uh, after these procedures, and the size of their tumors was seriously decreased. So here on the slide, you can on the photo, you can see the schematic model, how neutron capture, capture therapy works. And on the slide, you can see the uh, structural elements that nuclear research facility has, uh, has to have to develop this technology.